Father in heaven, we thank you right now for this opportunity. We thank you just being alive now, Father. We pray right now for blessing upon this community, blessing upon this country that 
trouble that we're having with Russia and, uh, and other places around the world, we say that you know, Father, you know what's right, you know what needs to be done. And we're looking independent on you now, so those things be taken care of. Help us, Father, as only you can do and you will do. We thank you for where you brought us from and where you're carrying us to. These blessings and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> We always have about two minutes of reading before we start our meeting. And then just information for the public and for you that are here. And as the conference line has been set up, and the number is 1 917 900 The access code is 3234 pound sign. This is not a total free number. And you may be subject to long distance charges according to your long distance plan. Will the chairperson open the meeting for public comments? Please follow the instructions. Dial five. The moderator will unmute your line when it's your turn to speak and notify you by announcing the last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address, and you will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Notice is thereby hereby given pursuant to the Florida statute 286.0105 that any person deciding to appeal any matter considered at this meeting will need a record of the meeting and may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceeding is made, which records include the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. Any person wishing to address the board, an agenda item will be given three minutes to speak. Three minutes for each item. Thank you. With that being said, <clears throat> we will go to consent item approval of the agenda. Motion to approve the revised agenda. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Uh, okay. The first thing is the approval of the consent agenda. Anyone got anything? Consent agenda, they want to take off or? No. I have a question if it's okay. Go ahead. On um, number five, uh, con concerning the dirty missiles. Now, if I read that right, we'll get reimbursed that 10,000? Yes, that's, that's the hope. So the first step, and, and while we're discussing it, we now have two derelict vessels right. that we need to try to address. So um, this is a 100% reimbursement program, um, but the rules are quite rigid, so we're trying to be very cautious. Okay. Motion for you. Motion second. All in favor? Saying aye. Okay, we go to public uh, bids slash public hearing. Board to hold the second of two public hearings on the passage of a proposed ordinance amending the Taylor County Code of Ordinance to provide criteria such as destruction in the flood hazardous area. Now, I suppose this is. The bid now. What about the bid? Who? This is a public hearing. Okay, this is a public hearing. Okay, now this is open for a public hearing. Anyone here to speak for or against? So, if, if we get a motion to read the ordinance by title, <coughs> I'll read it since I raise my hand, then we can. Okay. I to read by title only. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The order is. An ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Taylor County amending the Taylor County Code of Ordinances Land Development Code Chapter 42, Article 11, Flood Damage Prevention to provide criteria for agricultural structures and accessory structures in flood hazard areas 
to specify elevation of manufactured homes and flood hazard areas, providing for applicable and severability, and providing for an effective date. Okay. This is a public hearing. And one here to speak for or again. Okay, we'll close the public hearing for the commissioners. Anyone speak for or against it? If not, do I have a motion we approve? Approve? Is this a roll call? Yes, it's a roll call. Yeah, so we need a motion and a second, and then we'll do a roll call. Motion, motion. to approve. Second. All right. All in favor? So I'm not roll call. Okay. So roll come on. Commissioner English? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Newman? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Commissioner Gens? Yes. Okay. We go to item seven, the board to consider one amendment to the Dr. Memorial Hospital Board and directed by the London County Council. I still recall the last vote to be in the said the board wished to reconsider this item when a full board was approved. Go ahead while you tell her that. We did make some requested changes to the calendar at the last meeting, and that draft is in your packet. Um, there was a question after last week's meeting if the workshop on February 22nd could possibly be moved to 9 o'clock a.m. I believe that is Livestock Fair Week, and there may be some. Discuss Keaton Beach property sale. At the last meeting, there was a question regarding the um, ability to close one of the lanes 
at King Beach Boat Ramp for a commercial fish or people only. And I have the latest FBIP program guidelines. And if I may just read a section from that. Under access, recipients of FBIP funding must allow reasonable public access to any part of the FBIP funded facility that would normally be open to the public and must not limit access in any way that discriminates against any member of the public. An FBIP funded facility must be open from a minimum of dawn to dusk unless it is necessary to temporarily limit public access to all or part of the facility due to an emergency, repairs, construction, or other safety precautions. Okay. And that's telling us it should be open to the public. That would, that would All be. lanes. I'm waiting to see lanes down there. It says recipients of FBIP funding must allow reasonable public access to any part of the FBIP funded facility that would normally be open to the public and must not limit mm -hmm. access in any way. So there's no restriction. Okay. It just reads to any part of the FBIP funded facility. So I wanted to update the board for you. Our staff's interpretation is that um, we should not limit access in any way. Any questions? Well, if I could, Mr. Chairman, if we could discuss that. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to look at this issue and, and see if there's a way that this board might come to a solution. So, uh, my thoughts are I would like to see the board retain this property. And, and I would also like to uh, request that staff look at further use in respect to. Um, ditching or kayak, given this area and the location and the um, challenges that kayakers would have with the King Beach boat ramp. So, if I may make a motion, the motion would be for the county to retain the property and to instruct staff to look into those future uses. I think you're, I think we, <coughs> isn't that on the agenda? Oh, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking about the. Uh, <laughs> what was your motion again? The motion is for the county to retain the property and to request staff to look in, in future uses, fishing and or kayak. <clears throat> fishing or kayaking. Who do you make that decision today? I. I mean, I thought we were going to move on instruction from staff as to restriction possibilities and the further discuss it. In other words, in other words, you would want kayaks unloaded there and people park there on the property and unload their kayak? I would want to see if that's a potential use, yes, sir. It's not really feasible to expect folks to paddle down the canal or channel with all the traffic. And we're limited with the, without the access to get free. On the east side, that they put in in the, on the back of the house, they have the access to the whole gulf right yeah. there. But there's not enough parking there for many people, so they have to park on the lot across the street, what you say. Yes, right. and that's why I was wanting staff to explore those options to make sure it would be deep. So you would be able to explore those options before we just, just said that we're going to keep it? Maybe explore the option that that can happen. Is that your request, Commissioner Newman, that staff report back to the board? Well, sure. I mean, I, I did make the part of the motion to take the problem. At this time, no. Some. Well, I can <clears throat> amend that, and if staff comes back and says it's not usable, <clears throat> make part of this discussion. But being that it's a usable parcel, I, I feel like there's potential use there. Talking about both lot, right? A yes. fillable lot and a buildable lot too. Yes. Well, you would almost 
there's really, I don't think there's any space for parking on the smaller lot. So if there was a possibility of maybe applying for a grant to build certain amenities there, like a possibly a fixed dock or, um, or you know, some type of shelter, sure. then people would really have to cross, would have to park on the lot across the street. <laughs> now, there are several challenges to utilizing that area for public access. But um, I believe what Commissioner Newman is asking is that we have time to really um, invest possibility and come back to the board. Sure. Yeah. Just one minute, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I'm, I'm for keeping your property, but in terms of the other part of your motion, I just don't, you know, uh, you know, I guess we can wait till y'all come back, but I don't see where there would be, there'd be another parking and now on the one lot that is very small. Um, I know there was cons some concern about people having to drive across the property on or down his property to get to that perhaps. So I don't want to create a problem, but if, if you're going to research it and come back with some clear data, then I would second your motion because I definitely want the county to keep it. But I don't want people to call it up with crab traps either. Well, okay. yeah, I mean, we went down this whole path to sell these and get them back in the tax roll. And then now we're down to keep it on the turtle and have to, you know, kayaking locations and uh I would stay on the same path that we've been on but let's get them back on the tax road and, and uh, sell them to the adjacent landowners if they're interested. Obviously I think they are interested but if that did happen but I just I think we need to <coughs> we put a lot of effort into this and now almost to the last hour we're changing and going back to you. They want our same path and put these back on the tax roll. And it might not be a lot of money, but it generates some revenue for the county and the, the taxpayer. But they're not getting any use out of it today at all. I'm in favor of that too. <clears throat> we headed in the right direction to get things for a and find out what we had. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in that direction too, you know. Uh, we, this is another can we started kicking down the road. And, uh, I mean, we just, uh, we need to we start, um, we need to finish them. <laughs> I mean, so I'm just keep jumping around on things. Go ahead. Yeah. I think the one good thing that we're able to do is when we have made a decision and then after some time when we've received um, some input <coughs> from the public, and we thought more about it ourselves, that we have the ability to change our mind if we think something is not right. And so that's where I am. I don't think it's right to um, put, it, put it up for sale and cause a hardship on two families when we don't have to put it on the tax roll. I just, as I said before, I just don't feel like that that's the right thing to do. And I don't think that's the way you treat people is back them up in a corner. And, and so I, I could not go along with, with that. And I, I respect y'all's opinion, don't get me wrong. Um, but this is just one of those times <coughs> where we disagree. So uh, with that being said, uh, I would second your motion. Okay. In motion and second, all in favor of it being kept by the county by the sign of act. Uh, all right, so we go back for the sale. It failed for the lack of three to two. 
factible. Do I hear a motion to set? Put it up for debate. Motion to second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How about, not to be out of turn here, but how about clarifying that a little bit just for staff's benefit and probably Conrad's benefit? When you say just put it up for sale, are we talking the west lot? Or are we talking about the east well, parcel? Because one of them is not developable. We've discussed that in previous meetings. I was and here last meeting. So are you talking about both sides that you're suggesting to, I don't think, I think the discussion it's was not an open sale. One can be offered due to the size. Yes, the West. Can be offered without a, a public sale to the adjacent landowner. Correct. The one that's doable is would obviously be a public sale, and the adjacent landowner would be obviously involved into that sale. Am I allowed to say anything? Because I'm not living next door, not who's not going to pick from the auction up to the. I just want to. Are you going to auction up? Go ahead. Yeah. So if you're going to put. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So when you put this lot that's inside my house up for sale, are you going to go around the county and put all the lots for sale? Do I want to know? Because now I'm upset. Yeah. I mean, because now I'm pissed is what I am. To be frank. Because we didn't ask for this. And I don't think it's fair that you do that y'all are doing this to us, putting this lot up for sale that I mean it may look good on paper, but for a hundred and 40,000, you're fixing to hurt us and, you know, our local and, and other members in that community. So, I mean, you think that it's going to go up for sale. I mean, now I'm going to have to go and hire an attorney and find out what my rights truly are. And I sat here and tried to pray that the best, you know, that the best thing will happen. And it's not. I mean, that lot is not... It's not as big as it looks. Is that why there's so many feet that's in the water? There's a curb right there. There's animals that live there. We live there. I mean, it's it's. Have you stepped foot on it? Have you actually come and physically put yourself in our position and actually stepped on that lot and actually looked at it to see how big it is, to see or see how little it is, and to see the shape of that lot? I, I mean, the county I needs to, and it's not, it's, it's not, if you, whoever buys that lot, if they build a house there, it's going to sit right on top of us. None, none of you would, none of you would want that next door to you. I mean, I mean be honest. If you look around Keep Nature, a lot of them just come on top of us. Right, but they don't make it right. And you're, you're, and you're, you can make that lot of green space. I mean, that's, you don't have to fill every little piece of Keaton Beach up with a 20-foot house up in the air or 50 campers and what I'll compress in one little lot. Just because somebody else does it doesn't make it right. It's not right what you're doing. And you can put, you can put, you just, you don't, that little piece, people ride bicycles through that community. You can make that part, that little, it's a little lagoon right there with animals and ducks and gators and pelicans. You can put picnic tables out there. You can put a little pavilion out there. People ride their bikes. Put a little dock out there. Go out there and feed the ducks. You can turn that into a beautiful little lot. You can't be, you don't need another house 20 feet up in the air all crammed in there together. Make one little spot. Make it just a beautiful little, where people can ride their bicycles. It may not be big enough to put kayaks in there, but you could go and put a little picnic table, pavilion, put a little um, dock out there for people to ride their bikes. Put a little you can people can ride their bikes, park their bike, get out, have lunch, feed the ducks with their animals. There's a lot you can do in that little lot for the community to use. People to ride their bicycles and stuff. I just, I just. I, I, just, I feel your pain. I, I'm very sorry. I'm I mean, sorry. when you 
we are the only little house right there. So when you go and you put that little house and people put it, it's, it's barely big enough. If somebody puts a camp, all you will have room for there is a camper and a truck and that's it. That's all you will have room for. That's it. That's it. There's no room for nothing else right there on that lot. You're right there by that road. And it's it's going to look like they're right there in my front yard. It's going to look it's going to look terrible. It's just, it's just I think I just wish y'all would turn it to like a little green space, retain it, invest, give it just a little bit more time to investigate what you can do with that lot. Besides, put more campers on it and another house that's going to just make it look ugly. You know, there's no, you know, people ride their bicycles all the time. I just think you can turn that little lot into something beautiful. It could be a beautiful little spot for a picnic table. Put a bicycle ramp for people to pull the bicycles up there, get out, eat lunch, walk, put a little dock there, go out there, look at the ducks, watch the gators swim up. It's right there by a bridge. You can sit there and watch the kayak or kayakers are in there out of there all the time, going underneath that bridge all the time. It's a beautiful little lot. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin that beautiful little lot with another camper or a, a house. You don't need it. Just I'm begging you, retain it. Do a little bit more investigation on it. Ask, you know, I'll get out and go door to door and see, you know, ask people what they, you know, can we put something there for people that ride their bikes through there? Golf carts are going up and down there all the time. Let people get out. We don't care if people get out. It would look pretty there with some picnic, some pretty picnic tables and a little dock for people to get out and go do whatever. I'm just, it is what it is, I guess. I'm just, I just wish that, you know, I guess do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, that's all I can say about that. You know, I just hate that that lot is a beautiful little lot. I'm just, it's, I'm just afraid it's going to get you, it's going to destroy it. It's going to destroy it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I agree with what she said. And, um, <coughs> you know, we've, we've chosen for some reason to pick out these two lots. Let's, let's put everything we've got on, on the market to sell everything. Why pick out these these two where you have people living there? Um, put them all. Put everything we've got on, on, on there to be fair. Because the way it is now, I don't think this is fair to these two um, families that live next to these lots. Thank you. There's a motion, I'll second it. <clears throat> we need to put some stuff we got on for, for sale. Right now, there's never been a time to sell something at a decent price, and now it's time. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I don't think it could change any time. I'm going to make a motion to carry it through. I make a motion to put all the properties that are used on the plate. County owned. Let's, let's do it. We got all the agenda. Yeah. Our first county agenda. The, <coughs> the motion now is to offer both of these properties on the agenda for sale in accordance with the statute. That's our motion right now. Yes. So you don't see who's for and against that. If y'all are ready, you can. Okay, it was three two. We need. Yeah, I heard all three on there. Never did ask for a name. Uh, I, I made a motion to the same property and the same I'm not going to support it. I feel like we owe it to the residents to lost potential uses for these properties. I'm not convinced. Mm -hmm. so I'm not a president. Mr. Chairperson, can I ask for a Mr. Conrad, I know that when we have a, an application for a an abandonment of public property, that as part of the ordinance for rights of way abandonment, there there has we need to make sure that if it's waterfront property, that it does not serve a public purpose. 
Now, I don't know if this would be considered a rights of way, but do we need to go through a formal process to ensure that there's no public use of this property since it is waterfront? Or does that not apply in this situation? I don't know that that applies in this situation. I don't know that. Um, again, uh, this board has plowed this ground. And at the last meeting, it was a two to two vote, as I recall. So that was the motion was made at that this time did not pass. Am I understanding that correctly? Right. Okay. So again, you know, you've got you've got the two issues in the in the statute and you've got these two um, pieces of, of property. So uh, one of the things that, that needs to be considered too is um, when you're selling this property and you're putting it on the tax rolls, um, are you really um, really <coughs> An intelligent thing with regard to that uh, would uh, you sold it the uh, benefit with regard to taxes versus what would be responsible for giving services to those folks that purchased the property? Is that a physical uh, uh, smart thing to do as a practical matter? But with regard to whether uh, how we're going to do this, what I do is I pull out the statute, you know, and I told you that I looked at that statute until I was blue in the face to figure out how, how, they, how they, they worked and I asked other folks. So what I would have to do if you say, okay, you know, do the, uh, the, the advertisements that you need to do if you need to do an advertisement. So uh, I will do what y'all instruct me to do, but it'll take a little bit of time if you're following what I'm saying. Is there the potential that this would be necessary as far as due diligence, given the water front, as the right way would be? Could be. Could be. I certainly want to make sure that. Well, that was the question I didn't know. Before I, we move unfortunately, I didn't know that question was come, coming up <laughs> this morning. <You> gotcha. <laughs> so, the answer to your question is I don't know, but I'll try to find out. I think we should find out. All right. So the yeah. question is, we instruct the attorney to explore those necessities, please. Just to make sure that we have you not and I need to have a meeting on that. Yes, if it, it will help you and me both, and be curious. So, so does this mean then that we're going to hold up um, putting this on the market until we find out the, the answer to these issues? It seems like to me that would be the proper thing to do. I know. The thing is, the thing is, is that I don't know that uh, there's a hold up, but it would just be a, a, a research to be done of how to do it. And we'll report back to the board. The, the statute, and Conrad maybe can clarify this, but for disposition of property, doesn't it require that the board has made a determination that the properties have no potential for public purpose, they serve no public purpose, no longer, I think was maybe the terminology. That's what the terminology is. I didn't bring the statute here today, but it's what I was remembering. I read it a couple of times to the board. Are you referring to the, the out of 125 or to our local ordinance? I was referring to the statute, the Florida statute. 125. Seems like it makes the, the phraseology is that it no longer serves a public benefit or a public purpose. I, that doesn't sound familiar, Kenneth. I was referring to our local, um, our local ordinance in relation to rights of way. Yes, and I wasn't referring to the water point. I was referring to the disposition of the property itself. I don't see that in 125.35. It just states that whatever parts. the board determines that it is 
to the best interest of the county to do so, to the highest and best better for the particular use the board deems to be the highest and best. Now, there are two parts of that statute because we've got two different um, properties. Correct. That, that's in the preface. Um, that's in 1A. 1A. And okay. that's the one that, uh, that's the property, if I remember correctly, that is buildable. All right, so I've got them backwards. i got to go back and look. The one on the west is considered buildable. The one on the east is not. I don't see a reference to public use in 125.35. But there may, there may be some words. for public, public purpose is what I said. Okay. So I don't see that in 125.35. But there may be something in 125. Yeah, I thought you had to get to that point before you made the decision to dispose of the property is what I was questioning. My reason for saying that was if we've gone to the extent of saying we're ready to dispose of this, then we have by default made that determination that there is no public purpose for these parcels. And just to be clear, are we, are we sure that there's no public purpose? That's what started this whole thing with public use of. That's why I asked the question. We, we wanted to let the man unload the crab traps there on that lot, and that started this whole thing. Yes, and I told you right there, and they said, no, you can't load your, unload your crab traps there, because that's not, you know, Public can't use it. Understood, but and, and all I was suggesting was that the public purpose may include a, a larger opportunity than just the crab traps. That's the reason I made the motion right, that's to retain the property and allow staff to explore those options to, to confirm and deny that. Yes, and there's been some discussion at a staff level of potential use of these properties, um, but what we you know have circled back around to is that on the larger lots parking would be limited um if if you're talking if you're discussing a kayak um I mean, that's, area that's why we discussed fish and dog right. other issues that may be uses for the public well, i mean i will very openly disclose that i don't think that is those pieces of property are amenable to a launching facility i just don't do i don't think it because it's not they are not of sufficient size for the logistics for that type of a facility. I do think they have potential for a passive area. That being, if you are to have any type of, um, of a docking facility, it would be a fixed one. It wouldn't be a water access point. And that would purely be for passive activities as opposed to an active launching type of facility. So I, I mean, don't expect that this this part of staff anyway would be in support of that. I I think because of the logistics of where they are, the nature of the community, I don't I don't I don't see that as a as an additive to that area having an active launching type facility in the middle of that residential neighborhood. Well, given it's a golf car community, there are potential other uses beyond that, and that's why I said an, a, a passive. Facility yeah. passive meaning that it would be a sitting area, a picnic area, um, a viewing area, for lack of a better term, <clears throat> not something that you are dragging a trailer or a truck up in there and trying to actively launch um, a vessel. And, and if I may, Mr. Chairperson, the only other roadblock that we saw was any type of passive, you know, <laughs> converting that to any type of passive park is the obvious issues that we may have with maintenance um you know to to get maintenance crews to that area or in introducing maintenance crews to a residential neighborhood for mowing and and those type of activities i'm not saying it's not impossible it's just something to consider and the last thing i'll add just before i just before i hush is the only reason i spoke up was going the full extreme of the position of let's just dispose of every county property. As an employee and as a citizen, I don't think that's a great idea, just a unilateral decision. I do think it's important for you guys to think of those things on as they arise, because every piece of property has its own nuances. 
and it would be best to make those decisions at the time that it become a necessity instead of just once and for all. So that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. This all this all started because there was one crabber that wanted to use that small lot. And we went through a lot trying to accommodate one crabber. How many crabbers are there? But for some reason, we've tried to accommodate one crabber. Okay. If I'm going to go into business or if, or if I have a business I'm going to be looking around okay I need a lot I need a place to do this I'm not going to go to the county and try to freeload off the county I'm going to look around because there were plenty of available lots to buy so if I'm going to be in business I'm going to find me a lot to buy and I'm going to go ahead. If I can't afford to buy a lot, then I need to do something else. But I don't think it's right that all of this has been pushed off on us because of trying to accommodate one crabber. Now, what about if four or five more crabbers come along? What are we going to do then? Are we going to go through this whole thing again to try to accommodate each and every one of them? Don't get me wrong. I'm for businesses. But you've got to make your own way. If you need a place to launch your stuff, go buy it. Don't come to government and want government to give it to you or provide it for you. And, it, and in the meantime, you're backing up other innocent people into a corner. I don't think that's right. And I told you a story because I told you I was going to hush. But there are other um, individuals along those lines that have made those types of um, suggestions. And it was in Steenhatchee, actually, where they were looking for an opportunity or a consideration of some type of a, of a, a loading facility. Um, from my understanding, there is one on the Gina side that the commercial fishers are have an area that they come up, offload, and turn around and leave. Um, I can see a location on a scene hatchy that it's plausible. I don't know right offhand where there would be an opportunity in, in the Keaton area, per se. You know, it would have been a, de a definite um, amenity that we could have included at the regional facility if we'd have, you know, pursued the Hagen's Cove thing. But there are others that are looking for that type of um, access, I guess is best word. Absolutely. Well, I, if I could suggest, I think that... Um, I mean, it's kind of two different issues, but I'm certainly interested. I think we need to obtain um, some type of listing of county properties. <laughs> Let me work on that and, and create an inventory and then bring that to the board because that and, and that way you'll know how many properties we're even discussing. And, um, and then there is also, um, we need to have a discussion about the use of any county property potentially for, for housing. So if, if you'll give me time to create an inventory, I can bring that back to the board for discussion. Okay. Jamie? No, I just, you know, I understand this way of frustration in a property like this. I mean, I know you buy property, whether it's uh, vacant, county-owned, or individual-owned, there's always a chance that it could sell. Uh, given the location of the place, I mean, I'm, I'm with Mr. Dudley that it's not feasible as a launching area. And also given the location of where it's at, it's, you know, it is a golf cart community, bike riding community, but no one's going to park there and watch the sunset. It's, it's not a place that anyone's going to drive a vehicle down there and just pull up on these lots and just sit there because there's there's nothing to look at. But, I, I mean, I have to just stand with, I mean, we have no use for it to do anything with it. So we just, we 
need to let it go to the folks that can get some use out of it. Okay. Now, the last motion we had was to sell it. Did that stand? That passed three to two. Three to two. Okay. Now, Mr. Bishop, with that being said, what more do we have right to those properties? Do we have any more right to those properties since we made that decision? Since the decision has been made to sell it. Well, you can always go back and change the decision, uh, you know, of course, because this thing's gone back and forth. Uh, yeah. I'm doing a yo yo. You know, it's gone back Being and forth. Being out of the road. Yeah. Um, uh, certainly, uh, uh, The answer to your question is, you've made a decision, you can go forward with it, or you can, you know, um, uh, I think my instructions would be to try and follow the statute with regard to uh, what we need to do, because there's two separate issues with two separate pieces of the property, if you recall the, the reading of the statute. And uh, then the other thing is, um, uh, you know, we could, you know, the, the board always reserves the right to um, um, not take any of the uh, of, of the bids on it, you know, as a practical matter, you know, that would be in the advertisement. Do y'all understand what I'm saying on that? Reject any and all bids uh, on it. So there'll be different types on each part, each, each parcel. Mm -hmm. okay. But, you know, uh, what y'all have the right to do is determine again, um, once we do all those that advertisement, you know, somebody says, well, we don't want to go forward with it. You, you know, you can stop it or you can continue on. But at this position, at this point, y'all three to two agreed to, um, to start the process on both lots, as I understood yeah. the motion that, that y'all. Um, okay. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. We'll go, we'll go forward with whatever we need to do in order to make, to start the process of settlement. Y'all need to do that, yes. I think okay. I understood it. Any more questions? Any more, any more anything? We'll go to item number 11. We do have the results of number seven. Okay. Yeah, uh, y'all picked um, Jennifer Schoflet. And the uh, ballots and also the computation of it if the clerk has anybody wants to look at it. And Jennifer. The Shopla. name is Shopla. 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 S H O P L A K. Okay. Thanks. You go to the eleven. Board to consider approval of draft traffic signal and flashing beacon maintenance agreement and adoption of authorizing resolution as agenda by Hank Evans. Okay, what's up? We're asking the board to, um, to approve the continuing agreement with Hank Evans. Motion to read the resolution by Todd Long. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Resolution authorizing the execution of the traffic signal and flashing beacon maintenance agreement between the state of Florida Department of Transportation and Taylor County. Okay. Motion to read motion to adopt the resolution. Okay. Motion second, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Good. And motion to approve the maintenance agreement. Second. Motion second, all in favor? Uh, Pardon? Do you have a tally yet on the board, DMH board? Yes, he gave it to us. Ms. Jennifer. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you need to make a motion to appoint it, uh, Ms. Schofield. Okay, we we'll make a motion. Go ahead. Motion. motion second, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. 
Sorry, right, I guess I didn't do it loud enough. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go to number 12. The board to consider approval of local agency program reimbursement agreement. <coughs> Proposing joint participation with FDOT in the project management of the design phase of the Granger Bridge replacement project. This is the item that we saw at the last agenda, um, where we had a draft proposal for our participation in the design phase. And DOT looking up to go back and get that to me before, so that I could put it on this agenda. This um, agreement has uh, a little over $26,000, I think, worth of reimbursable expenses for my participation and time, or uh, take community of county person's participation in this uh, management role of the, the bridge design phase. And you will see in here that there are some milestones identified with this portion of it. And I want to say the LAP agreement has to be complete by uh, May 2024. Mm-hmm. So the, That'll be the bulk of the work, um, getting it to the design and then the construction will be on the heels of that. So this has a resolution in it because it's a lack agreement that authorizes the chairman to sign on behalf of the board. So we need to approve that as part of this. Uh, resolution. Well. Yes. Okay. For number 12, there's the resolution. Is it, is it in this paper? Yes. Yeah, read by Tal only. Not yet. It's not okay. Motion is set. I'm going to make, make the motion. Second. Okay. All in, all in favor. Aye. All right. All right. It's another long one. Go ahead. Granger Bridge Replacement Local Agency Agreement Signature Authorization. Motion approved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Go ahead. Now. And the agreement itself would be needed to be approved. Motion second, all in favor. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Administrative items. The board basically mentioned at the last workshop that we were to move forward to obtain a, a survey of properties um, in the beach area where the seawalls are located. This is strictly a formality to move forward with that process. The surveys would um, not only determine <coughs> ownership of the seawalls, but we also want to um, wish to obtain a legal description of the property that is outside of the rock waterway. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And administrator discuss information items. Wanted to update the board that we have had two meetings of the local technology broadband planning team. Um, Commissioner Siegel is our Access 67 champion. Um, we had good attendance of those meetings. Um, we will be asking for public participation through community surveys, business surveys, and internet speed tests in order to gauge the public's avail- availability and affordability of high speed internet throughout Taylor County. Um, we will have paper and online surveys available to ensure that we do that we encourage every citizen's input. So we will be moving forward with those surveys this week. We've already posted some of them on Facebook, and I have sent emails to our committee to encourage sharing of those Facebook posts so we can get as much participation from our citizens as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Comments and concerns on the public for non agenda items. Anyone from the public would like to speak for non agenda items? Seeing no one from the public, there is no one. Okay, board information items. Mr. Newman? I would like to just uh, take a minute to commend Ms. Lawanda and staff and all the work that they put into our complex, sports complex. You know, we got uh, disc golf. A lot of a lot of these projects I'm talking about will be completed within the next couple of weeks. And our disc golf course that we spoke on earlier this uh, last year, 
should be, I think, completed by next week. Uh, batting cages for baseball and softball, we ended up with, what, eight, seven? Seven, seven. Uh, they, they will be finished up by uh, next week. And uh, skinning the baseball field, the grass off the baseball field, making it a multi-use complex, that's, uh, I, I'd say by the time they do the new button everything up, we're probably looking at two to three weeks and we get our bases and all back set in these locations. So um, I'd like to commend them at what all the work, and I know there's plenty more that I couldn't mention that during the week that have put a lot of work into getting this complex where it is today. Um, I'd also like to recognize the Taylor County Baseball Association. They have 200 plus kids signed up for baseball at 21 to 22 teams this year, which is a big deal because that's that's where it used to be whenever I played ball. Mm -hmm. When I was that age, I mean, we used to, I mean, it, it, it's, it's always been a couple of teams and they play each other each, each, each time they play, but now they've got four to six teams in each division and it's a big deal for the community. So I'd like to really recognize the Baseball Association for the job that they've done in putting that together. I mean, I think it went in the direction that we wanted it to go and where we could focus, put a lot of our focus in on, you know, doing enhancements and improvements to the complex. So I'd really like to thank them for what they're doing. Uh, I think that's all I have. There's a lot of people involved. Yeah. You get the moms and dads and behind 22 teams, sure, with 22 teams. You will have some participation, and I think Taylor County would be proud of that. Okay. It would also eliminate some other stuff, too. Okay. Sure. I want to uh, um, say thank you for your leadership um, on this effort. I know you've put a lot into it. You've been really involved, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. No All right. Nothing else? Motion to adjourn? Motion. Okay. Thank you.